Good evening. Former Highlands councillor Ken Brotherston and his two sons have been found not guilty of second-degree murder. They were charged in the death of Keith Taylor in May 2008 after Taylor's body was driven to West Shore RCMP headquarters. The judge's ruling today came as a shock to Taylor's family and it drew cheers from the supporters of the accused in a packed Victoria courtroom. A News reporter Stephen Andrew was there and has more on the verdict. Mr. Rutherson, do you have any comment on the verdict? Just glad it's over and uh, just <laughs> going to try to get back to some normal life. Ken Brotherson and his two sons, Ken Jr. and Greg Brotherson, walk out of the Victoria Courthouse free men. I feel great. Thanks so much. The judge accepted that all three acted in self-defense in the death of Keith Taylor and acquitted them of second-degree murder. The case began in 2008 when Brotherston Sr. drove Keith Taylor's body in his pickup to the West Shore RCMP detachment. During the trial, the court heard how Brotherston's sons, Greg and Ken Jr., were heavily addicted to drugs and that Taylor was also an addict and known to be a dealer. The former Highlands counselor testified Taylor wanted money from his family, so he and his sons went to a known drug house to talk to Taylor. Brotherston Sr. says when he choked Taylor to death, he was acting in self-defense, that he feared for his life when the drug-fueled Taylor pointed a gun at him, and later when Taylor came at him with a knife. Justice Janice Dillon agreed, saying the Crown, which argued the three men had gone to the house looking for a fight, had not proven its case beyond reasonable doubt. She set three innocent men free. When, uh, when the verdict came forward, I, I noticed that you gave a huge sigh, and uh, there was a lot of emotion in the courtroom. How did you feel at that exact point when you heard the verdict? Well, completely ecstatic. I was overwhelmed. The judge's decision appears to be centered on the credibility of Crown witnesses who were at the house the night Taylor died. She calls Taylor's girlfriend a lying witness. The defense questions whether the case should have ever gone to trial. We've got somebody that's uh, died as a result of a, uh, a violent struggle, and they've got conflicting statements from their witnesses. I'm a little concerned, and I have been since the outset, that uh, the reliability of the witness has always been the issue and to proceed with a second-degree murder charge um, on uh, witnesses whose evidence is um, unreliable, it, it should be a concern to all of us. The Crown says it too will have to consider the judge's comments on credibility before it decides whether to appeal the verdict. Well, at, at this point, the Crown will have to closely review the trial judge's decision. Any decision on an appeal is only made after a detailed review, so it's premature to draw any conclusions at this point. The lawyer for Ken Jr. is confident there will be no appeal. Not a chance. There's findings of fact by a, a very smart judge who hit the nail on the head. I don't think there's a snowball's chance. Keith Taylor's family was angry with the verdict and did not want to speak to reporters as they left the courthouse. The people that got let off at the court system failed. Taylor's mother was too distraught to appear on camera, but told the Globe and Mail, you never expect your child to die before you do. You can never get over that. In Victoria, Stephen Andrew, A News.